So we're going to talk about angular acceleration. And the angular acceleration is, it, it, in the vestibular system, it's all about turning acceleration into some kind of a stimulus that you deliver to the hair cells. So angular acceleration is going to uh, activate hair cells that are in the canals. Linear acceleration is going to activate hair cells in the sacculus and utriculus. So we're talking about the, the canals because we're talking about angular acceleration. And at each end, at one end of each of the canals, there is a crist ampullaris where the hair cells are concentrated and they're all oriented in one direction. Moreover, within that, that crista, the hair cells, their bundles are embedded in this gelatinous veil called the cupula. So this just shows you their, their, their hair cells are embedded in here. And so let's go over to the board and think about how this is going to work. What I've diagrammed here is we're looking down at the top of the head and we're looking through a cross section. Here's the nose, here are the two ears, here are the horizontal canals. We're going to concentrate on yaw movements because they're easiest. So the yaw move, a yaw movement um, is a movement where we rotate the head in this direction. So the nose would be coming over here. And as we do this, the bony labyrinth is fixed to the head, obviously, but the fluid in the membranous labyrinth is not fixed and it will stay stationary. So this is moving, the fluid is staying stationary, and that means that it moves relatively uh, to, the, to the head. And it's moving, um, it's, it's creating a, a drag on the cupula. And so the endolymph movement, the movement it, that the hair cell is going to see is in exactly the opposite direction. So if the rotation of the head is this direction, the movement of the endolymph, the relative movement of the endolymph will be in this direction. And as it turns out, the hair cells are oriented in this direction, in the same direction. So they, a hair cell sitting here would have its kinocilium going this way. So this endolymph movement is going to excite this hair cell. So now, excited, excited, excited. Great, wonderful. Now, let's think about what happens over here. Here, we see that the endolymph movement the head, is, the head is moving this way, the endolymph movement is going to be in that direction. So same direction, just it's the opposite, uh, it's the opposite canal. But now the hair cells are again oriented in the same way. They're oriented towards the utriculus. And, uh, uh, and so this movement is in the, is in the non-preferred direction. Okay, so here it was in the preferred direction, here it's in the non-preferred direction. So this cell is going to be hyperpolarized. So this cell will depolarize, it'll be floating around at negative 50, and it will depolarize, and this cell, negative 50, and will hyperpolarize. All right, well that makes total sense. So this tells us that these two, hair, these two canals are paired. Whatever happens here, the opposite is going to happen here. If nothing happens here, nothing will happen here. OK. And that's, that's all there is to it, except that we have two other pairs of, hair can, of, of uh, canals. And we have to understand what those uh, two are. So let's imagine, we know that they're oriented in, I'm making this really big just so that we can see it. There is an anterior canal on the right and an anterior canal on the left. There's a posterior canal on the right and a posterior canal on the left. In both situations, the uh, hair cells are oriented away from the utriculus. So let's just take this one. If, I, if we move the head in this direction, so this is a half roll forward, a half, I'm sorry, a half pitch forward, a half roll right. That's this direction, okay? Half pitch forward, half roll right. That is going to make fluid in the right anterior canal move this way, away from the utriculus, up. 
and the hair cells in the right anterior canal are oriented away from the utriculus. So this will be excited. On the other hand, over here, it's going to be the opposite, and you should work out at home how, the, how it is that these cells will be inhibited. So what you can see is that these two canals, what happens to one, the opposite will happen to the other. And that's true for these two canals. So the pairings are, the two horizontal canals are paired. That seems kind of obvious. And then these pair, these two are paired. So the right anterior is paired with the left posterior, and the left posterior is paired with the uh, the left anterior is paired with the right posterior. Great. So we're going we're gonna to do a couple things with this. That's it in a nutshell. That's all, that's all there is to angular acceleration with a few additional um, points. The first point is that, as you, may, as you might have already realized, that many movements, including the pitch and roll movements, are not in the orientation of the canal pairs. So what happens with, say, a pitch forward? If I pitch forward, that is a, an addition of, of, a, of a rightward pitch and a leftward pitch. This is a vector system. And so a pitch forward will excite both this anterior canal on the right while inhibiting the left posterior and also excite the left anterior canal while uh, inhibiting the right posterior canal. So the addition of this movement and this movement, which are in the, plane, in the directions of the planes, will produce this movement. Now, if the acceleration or if the pitch forward is, is a greater acceleration, that will mean that there will be a greater excitation of these two anterior canals. So virtually all of our movements are going to be combinations. They're going to be additions of, of two different, um, at least two different uh, uh, vestibular stimuli. And that includes stimuli that are not uh, that, that require the, the sacculus and, and utriculus. So just to show you examples of that right here, what I just showed you is that pitch forward is a pitch to the right um, and a pitch to the left. A roll right is a pitch uh, to the right and a backward pitch uh, to the right. Um, a forward pitch to the right and a backward pitch to the right. And then if you do something such as a right-hand pivot, there is a sideways translation that is going to affect, it is a piece of linear acceleration that will be coupled with a yaw rotation, OK? And the response will be uh, uh, accordingly. OK, so the final thing, to it, and this is, um, this is a little bit of fun, fun facts, fun vestibular facts, of which there are many, uh, but it also illustrates the points that we've just uh, gone through. Um, so let's imagine that a person drinks a great deal of alcohol. And when that happens, the blood thin, I mean, the specific gravity of blood is going to go down. The cupula gets, it, gets a blood supply. And so very uh, quickly after one drinks this alcohol and the blood is thin, the cupula will also have a decrease in its specific gravity. And it will therefore float up within whatever canal it is. It will float up. The result of that is that you'll have excitation, let's say, in both the horizontal canals or in, or in, in pairs that never should be excited together. And so let's say you had excitation in both horizontal canals. That can't result from anything uh, natural. And so that will give the person a sense of vertigo. This is a weird 
spinning thing. There's, there's excitation here, there's excitation here. It's at the same time, how can that happen? The only result, the only interpretation is some weird spinning um, uh, situation. And as it turns out, the cha a change in specific gravity in the, in the blood is, is oftentimes, through evolutionary time, has been the reaction to toxins. And so there's the toxin detector hypothesis, which holds that the reason that, uh, that this kind of a, um, uh, a stimulus, an unnatural stimulus where both of the canal, canal pairs are, are responding the same, uh, that shouldn't, uh, the reason that that is detected as, as not only vertigo, but as nauseating and makes a person want to vomit is because that's the best way to get rid of a, of a, um, of a, uh, toxin. And, uh, and then, uh, just as a side note, the next morning, um, a person is dehydrated and specific gravity, uh, has gone up. Um, and now the, the cupula is, is sinking. And the only, uh, the only, uh, way to, to solve that is to drink more alcohol, which some would call the hair of the dog. And so there is a, a neurobiological basis for the hair of the dog. Okay, great. So this is how we respond to angular acceleration. We're now going to go on and look at linear acceleration. Yes.